I am Inez Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I'm starting a new series called Branding Your Name and whether you're a freelancer, a company or a YouTuber or whatever it is you do, branding yourself is really important nowadays and it's really important to brand yourself online but it's also really important to brand yourself offline and that's why I'm making this tutorial on how to create a business card in Photoshop. For me, a business card is really important. It shows off that kind of professionalism. If you have a business card on you, it just shows that you're really serious about what you do. And of course, some people will just take it and, and throw it away immediately, but you don't have to care about that. It's just giving that card just means that you're serious and for people that want to get your information that you can give it quickly it also shows them that you're organized and structured so it's really important to actually have business cards on you if you're doing something in the professional area so with no further ado let's get started i'll create a new file here in photoshop i will make this a landscape mode and i will use millimeters because i'm from belgium which is europe and I'm going to rename this to business card, uh, which means that we work with the metric system. So um, a business card is 85 uh, at 55 millimeters, uh, but currently I'm going to set this at 79 and 49, which means six millimeters less than the actual size, but I will explain in a minute why we do that. Resolution should be 300 DPI and a color mode of CMYK, which is uh, the color mode for print, so um, yeah. That being said, uh, everything is set. Let's create our new file. The first thing that I will do is hold Ctrl and press R on the keyboard, which is going to show my rulers here. And if I click on here and drag to uh, towards the bottom, it's going to give me guidelines. And I'm going to add my guidelines here on every edge of my canvas. Once I've done that, I will go to image canvas size and I will change my uh, width here to also millimeters. I will change this to the actual size. So the width should be 85 and the height should be 55 and I will click OK. Then I will again make some guidelines and the reason why I've done the first guidelines is actually uh, just if you create something, if you add some text or a logo, just make sure you don't pass these boundaries, just make sure it's inside here and yeah, um, this is just going to be part of the design, part of the business card, but you just want some margin from the sides uh, to have that. And the reason why we are adding new guidelines actually is to do another set of canvas size, go to millimeters and add like 91 and 61 and click OK. And that's again six millimeters and three millimeters on each side. And this is going to be our like um, our leak. Um, so if you're designing something and you're going to print this out, you're going to cut it on this line here. Um, but yeah, sometimes you, you just make a little bit of a mistake and then it's going to cut like so and then you will still have the design. So make sure you just design it this way. Okay, so we have our layers here. The first thing that we'll do is go to in, uh, into my colors. I will double click here and go to a blue color and pick a dark desaturated blue. Well, this is my opinion for my design. So let's do that. I will click OK, hold Alt and press Backspace to fill in my background. For now, I will just hold Control and press um, uh, well the dot uh, comma that's this one here and that will just uh, get rid of my guidelines for now so I can just concentrate on the actual design um, I will create my logo so I will click on my text tool I will keep it simplistic and also really important to keep everything very simplistic if you go online and you search on Google for business cards you're going to see a bunch of business cards with these shapes and and these reflections that they're faking in Photoshop and it does show off that you know the skills of Photoshop but it does not show off that you have the skills of a great uh, graphic designer because simplistic just shows so much more it's like, don't show off with all your, uh, well, if, if it's a nice and clean business card, it's also going to show off that you are professional, but just don't do overdo it. A lot of people tend to overdo it at first, um, but yeah, just try to keep it simplistic. So we'll click on my text tool, click here, and I will just enter tolerate it. And of course I will control A to select everything and make this white. Also something very important uh, that I found out the hard way is when I started and made my first business card, um, I was really proud of the design, but I wanted to print it out and I wanted to save a little bit on the money uh, for uh, the print quality actually. And I took like the lowest quality print, which means it doesn't wait much, uh, which means you will get a paper which uh, will be well printed, but uh, it's not going to feel very professional. And I didn't really notice it at first because I, I never really saw a lot of business cards. But if 
you're going to hand them out to professionals and they get your business cards and it's really sloppy um, or it's well really thin and they can bend it all the ways it's just not professional just try to find some thick business cards um, nobody told me at first so I think some people might uh, really appreciate this uh, but if you have thick uh, business cards they're going to look so much more professional and of course they're going to cost a little bit more but they are so worth it and you're just going to come along a lot more professional um, okay so I have my text here I will go and I'll click ctrl T uh, and well T and then ctrl A to select everything go into my character settings here and I will pick the font Lado go for a bold uh, font I'm going to zero this out or actually just put this at 100 so the spacing between the text and make it a little bit bigger not that big of course something like this okay so I have my text I will at the end of my text also I'm, I'm setting this at all caps uh, which means that they're all caps and I will just add a dot to the end just uh, as a design choice I will pick my selection tool um, also hold control press A on the keyboard and then just center it out clicking this and this that's going to center out my layer along uh, looking at the edges of my canvas or, or of my selection actually so I have my text right here I'm going to put it a little bit more towards the top and then I'm going to click on my shape here the rectangle tool um, I'm going to select a, a no stroke and I will select a fill of a nice red color so I'll go to my red color here and I will pick like a little bit desaturated and a little bit darker red click OK and then I will just do something like this uh, which could look pretty cool I guess um, or maybe put it on top here um, something like so and I will release it also control A and then just press V on the keyboard which is this key um, well the hotkey to get my selection key um, and then I will just center this out and just move it up like so and put it behind my text and the layers and that will give me something like this this offset kind of uh, color uh, well uh, kind of rectangle but I think it looks cool so I'm going to keep it this way and then of course we have tolerated but we also have cinematics so I'm going to pick my text tool click here again and enter cinematics Control A to select my text, go back to the character style, and then here I'm going to change it to a light uh, font. But just make sure, like, I also have hairline and it's going to be really thin. And just make sure that um, the thinner you go, uh, the more chance you have on, on glitches while printing. So um, really thin is, is not really advised. So go for light, uh, and this could be like a minimum for print, depending on the quality of uh, yeah the uh, manufacturer, of course. Um, but just to be sure if it's your first time working with them, uh, just make sure that you don't go really thin. Uh, for the text, I'm going to keep it like so. Um, let's go for a smaller font, something like 9. And then I'm going to space it out like a 1000 here. And that just looks cool. I think it looks cool, so I'm going to keep it that way. And I click on my selection tool and just position it right over here. Then I will again pick my rectangle tool and the reason why I put this at red is just to give some color to that card so I wanted to keep it, keep it simplistic but just a little bit of color just does so much um, and it just um, brings everything to life. So I'm going to uh, click on my rectangle here just add something like this uh, like a small stroke of this red. I'm going to put it like right over here and then just hold control and press J on the keyboard and that's going to duplicate my layer you can also duplicate it by just dragging it into a new layer and that's going to duplicate it as well I'm going to undo that uh, so I just have two of these I'm going to drag this down holding shift and that way we have some one here as well and then I'm going to select all of these and also control J and move them to the right well click and shift to the right and I think this looks kind of cool um, so I'm going to select all of these together with my text and then reposition them the way I want them to be uh, Maybe make it a little bit smaller So the, the way to make it smaller is holding control and pressing T on the keyboard to get my free transform or go to edit uh, Transform I suppose Nope. Yeah free transform um, But yeah, just try to find or figure out the hotkeys. It's so much easier to work with uh, So we have this uh, subtitle. I'm going to drag everything here into a new folder so I group everything from my cinematics so this is my subtitle for example and this would be my logo so I'm going to hold control select both of these layers and drag them into a new group here and rename this to logo double click here and logo okay there we go drag my subtitle a little bit more towards my title itself 
and now we have a whole um, logo like so so I'm going to select both of these and also uh, put them in a folder and rename this a logo I do realize that my actual logo is a little bit smaller than my subtitle so I want it to be the same size so I'll open up my group click on the logo control T and make it just a little bit bigger and there we go and with the arrows you can also reposition it up a little bit if you want to and there we go so now I have something like this which looks pretty cool actually I'm going to close my group so now we have our logo and my background and that's it we, we don't have anything else so let's go to the brush settings and go to window brush and here we want to set some uh, things for the brush tip shape uh, we want a sm size of one pixel a hardness of 100 and a spacing as low as you well I think something like 10% could work uh, so we'll keep it at 10% and then we're going to pick our pen tool and now we're going to create a new layer by clicking here and now we're going to rename this to stripes and I'm going to do something abstract so it's just something freestyle I just click and do something like this just uh, see for the result first just make sure you're using straight lines here and keep on doing this until the entire canvas is filled with lines okay something like this and I'm going to um, make sure that my front color um, my foreground color is white click OK and then I'm going to right click and go stroke brush and just make sure simulate pressure is unselected and click OK right click delete the path or just go into the path and just deselect it and then lower the opacity something like 3 and now we have some nice stripes in the background of course uh, put it behind or below the logo in the layers and now we have something like this which looks kind of nice and abstract so uh, it gives it a little bit more detail and it's still simplistic so that's what I'm trying to say if you're a designer um, and you want to have detail like detail shows off that uh, something becomes more yeah it just looks a little bit more dynamic I suppose but if we're going to uh, show just don't exaggerate with things so the more subtle you do something the, the better it can look like if you're watching a movie uh, for visual effects artists uh, if you don't see that it's actually faked those are the best effects because you don't really realize it so that's pretty cool okay so um, this is our for um, well front page I'm going to uh, double click on my background and then just hit enter which will unlock this hold shift and select everything and then just drag it into a new group or hit control G on the keyboard and rename this to front part then I'm going to create a new layer on top of this background you don't have to rename everything because it's quite small but it's just a good habit to actually do um, and I will go and pick a nice light light white uh, light gray color um, I don't really like to use the actual white and black colors um, just a personal preference um, but actually these colors um, are very harsh so uh, of course for text you can use white but uh, for like a complete background I, I like to well I tend to use a little bit of light uh, gray if I want to use white so now I have my background here here what do we want for information that depends on whatever you want to do as a business for me for example it's not important to show my locations for some businesses it's important to uh, to know where it is so uh, what for, uh, for me it's important to have my name on it um, you can actually do your function um, your phone number email address and for example your website so let's get started I will click on my text tool and enter my name hit control A and I will pick the same red color actually so I'm going to uh, he head over to my swatches so Windows swatches uh, which will be um, let me see here right here I have my swatches and I will just make sure that my text is that red color that we used before and there we go so now I have my red text I will press T on the keyboard to select my text again back into character and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so here it's important to have these guides and um, but yeah, we'll, we'll do this first so go into text maybe make it like 12 uh, something like that make it zero I'm making this bold because your name is important you want them to see it and it should be uh, very visible okay so I'm going to put my name for example right here and just open up your guidelines and right here you can see where you can actually put it so I'm going to put my name for example right here 
or actually I'm going to center it out, put it right here. And yeah, deselect my uh, guidelines again. And I'm going to click on that Control J to duplicate my text layer. And you can see I duplicated it. I will click and shift drag it below and press T on the keyboard to have my um, text tool again, double click. And I will write my function, so founder and project manager, for example. And I will select everything, make this something like eight and space it out like 100 and make it, for example, that same blue or yeah, just doesn't really matter that much. I know it's around here, this color, we'll pick it like so and make this a regular. Okay, so now we have our function and our name. So now what do we want more is our website, our email address and our phone number. And that's where this really nice website comes in handy. I will search it right here. The link will be in the description. It's called flat icon right here. And if we search, for example, for a, a hyperlink, we can find something like so. And if we click on something that we like, for example, let's see this one. We can download the PNG, SVG, EPS or PSD. I like to work with SVG, which means vector based and then just click on it. Uh, choose a color, but it doesn't matter because we are going to change it in Photoshop anyway, or just pick white. I will use white actually, and then click on the download button. And yeah, of course, for the free ones, you do have to actually um, credit the authors um, all the time. So if you're using it, if you're using it online uh, for yeah whatever reason you're using them. So um, but you can find a lot of cool things like hyperlink phone. I use um, this one. And then for my mail, well, email, that's, um, well, didn't matter. This one, for example, also really cool. So I'm going to close this down. Um, I already have my, I will drag them all together in Photoshop and then hit return, return, return. And that's going to import everything as a smart object. I'm going to click on everything, hold shift and select everything. So you can see that everything, uh, well, all these icons are selected, hold control and press T on the keyboard to reveal the transform tool. And then I'm going to sh hold shift and hold alt and then just drag them in like so. Hit enter. And now I'm going to select here a lip tool and I'm going to shift drag um, a circle with the same red color as you can see right here. And I'm going to duplicate that one also control J, control J so three times and I'm going to put each icon above that layer. Um, so. So we have an ellipse, an icon, ellipse, icon, ellipse, icon. Okay, so um, now it's important to actually group these together. So select two, control J, select two, control J, select two, control J. You can rename it, uh, rename them if you want to. Uh, so now what I will do is actually uh, put one over here, for example, and control click on the thumbnail that's going to select um, the, well, the uh, ellipse itself. And now if we're going to click on our phone, we're going here and we click on a line, well, center, it's going to center it in the, uh, in the in our ellipse tool. And I can see that my ellipses are actually rather small. So I'm going to click on all my ellipses again, holding control, press control T and just make them a little bit bigger, um, something like this and hit enter. And then we're going to redo that process. So control click on the thumbnail, go to the uh, phone and then just center this out. And this looks a little bit better. Do the same thing for this one, click on the envelope and just do it again and now we can move this uh, group out of this also control click on this one and center our hyperlink so this is a hyperlink our mail and our phone I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to click on this icon which is going to center them out over um, yeah a linear line here uh, or, um, vertically and then right here we can actually make sure that they're aligned uh, well with this button that they are uh, yeah um, aligned well, they have the same spacing in between. So um, I'm going to reposition them, pick my guides to see if I'm okay. And then you can yeah, do some cool stuff. So put this on the side, control T to make it maybe smaller, hold shift and alt to make it uh, a little bit smaller this way. And if you want, for example, this to be a little bit more on top, you can select all of them again and then just space them out again. And that's going to recenter everything. So pick your guides and see uh, to actually position them like so. Okay. 
and do my guides and I'm going to pick my text tool again and enter my website so that's toleratedcinematics.com align it to the left and reposition it with the selection tool Sometimes it's also also handy to actually zoom out and hold a uh, existing business card to the screen to actually um, compare it with sizes. So if the text isn't too big or too small, um, most of the time it's too small. So like this could work. Um, maybe it should be a little bit bigger like the title. So I'm going to click on my title and just hold control uh, and then shift alt and just drag it out a little bit. There we go. So um, yeah, that way it's an easy way to actually visually see how it's going to look. Uh, Control J for the text of my of my website here. Drag it below, and then uh, yeah, enter my email address. So info at tolerated.be, uh, for example, and then just um, enter your phone number, which of course I'm not going to like. Is this the standard for America? I don't know. Um, and then just enter something. So again, you can do the same thing for your text, like all your text and just center, uh, center them out together and then just uh, reposition them like so. And yeah, actually that's it. You can select all of these uh, together with your text. So the uh, icons and your text and group them and hold uh, control A on the keyboard to actually center them uh, like so if you want to. Um, actually, I want them to be a little bit closer together. So what you can do is uh, actually move this one down a little bit and then just um, click on everything no click on the uh, icons first center them together and then the text center them together and there we go so now we have something like this move this a little bit more to the left maybe a little bit more up we have something uh, yeah that looks pretty cool we can actually go back into our front part and duplicate the stripes control J put them above the background here go into the color so double click here and go to color black or just that dark blue color click OK and OK and just increase the opacity to like 7 maybe it's going to be a, a little bit harder to see on white so there we go maybe even 10 um, yeah it's going to always look different when you print it out so well um, like these lines are going to be very uh, very hard to see depending on the quality again of the printer so uh, just yeah keep that in mind if you're making something uh, like this uh, like one thing that we could could do last is make a, a new uh, layer go to our rectangle tool and make like a thin stripe in between our icons like so and um, this is going to like simulate that everything is connected together and that's actually the ID behind the background for me um, that everything is connected together as a marketing team for example um, all these lines connect to each other and that was um, the idea uh, how I came to to actually do abstract lines in the background so that's it for this tutorial I hope you enjoyed it if you did give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more thank you so much for watching and goodbye <laughs>